Hello aspirants and welcome back to Geoscience Pulse updates. In today's episode, we are diving into the heart of recent developments in geology, specifically tailored for the UPSC Combined Geoscientist exam interview. If you have not watched the first part of this video series, you may consider watching it as there are few important developments discussed in that video as well. So, grab your notebooks and let's get started. Our first piece of news revolves around a pressing issue which is the vulnerability of glacial lakes in India. The government has taken a proactive stance in the wake of devastating events that uh, unfolded in Sikkim recently. What happened is recently Sikkim witnessed the catastrophic consequences of a glacial lake outburst. The Lonak Lake burst its bank which triggered floods that claimed at least 60 lives and caused extensive damage in districts like Mangan, Kangtok, Pakyong and Namchi. The destruction extended to a vital infrastructure which is the Chungtang Dam otherwise known as Tista Third Dam which impacted a major hydropower project in the state. In response to this tragedy, the Indian government is taking decisive action. They are set to reassess the vulnerability of all glacial lakes across the country through ground surveys. The decision underscores the importance of understanding and mitigating the risk associated with the glacial lake out outburst plots or the globes, right? A monitoring system will be established to uh, disseminate timely information about these potential glacial lake outburst plots and this step is crucial in preventing and managing such disasters in future, isn't it? And for your information, glacial lakes are formed by the melting of glaciers and accumulation of those melt, melt water in depression on or near the glacier surface. And episodes of uh, gloves, that is the glacial lake out outburst floods, occur when these lakes suddenly washed upon due to various factors such as excessive water accumulation or triggers like earthquakes, etc. And when a, a glacial lake uh, bursts, it releases a massive volume of water, of course, and it results in a flash flood, flash flood down the stream. Right in the downstream area, it results in a flash flood, and these floods can be extremely destructive and dangerous for both people as well as the environment, right? Given that the uh, glacial lakes are located in remote, high altitude areas, conducting ground service is a challenging task. And therefore, our current understanding of these glacial lakes is primarily based on remote sensing data. And while remote sensing data provides valuable insights, as you know, ground validation are essential for a comprehensive understanding of the area, isn't it? And this initiative is a significant step towards bridging that gap, right? So this is all about the uh, vulnerability assessment of all the glacial lakes that are present in India. <clears throat> Our next highlight takes us to the international stage where India has received an exclusive invitation to join the European Union's Critical Minerals Club or the Critical Materials Club. This club is a strategic alliance of nations committed to securing supply chains for crucial materials used in battery and green technology related industries, right? And their primary objective is to reduce dependency on China for these critical materials. Now, in addition to the European Union's invitation, India has already joined the US in the Mineral, uh, Mineral Security Partnership or the MSP, Mineral Security Partnership. And these collaborations reflect a global recognition of India's role in ensuring a sustainable and secure supply of materials critical for the energy transition, right? Towards a greener uh, energy transition and as you know these critical materials are the backbone of the energy transition essential for the development of renewable energy electric vehicles smartphones and various other products requiring low carbon and high efficiency technology right and the good news is india is not just relying on the international collaborations but it is actively involved in exploring and mining its own reserves of critical minerals uh, for as you may have already know that in jammu and kashmir we have identified significant lithium, lithium reserve, reserves and in Arunachal Pradesh there are extensive graphite deposits that are identified and in Rajasthan there are valuable potash reserves. When the government has taken a proactive step by passing the law to facilitate the auction of minerals, uh, mineral blocks streamlining the process for responsible exploration and extraction. Right? And next, the government has recently made a strategic move by amending the Mines and Mineral Development and Regulation Act 
which open the doors for the private companies to step into the critical realm of mining right and specifically for the minerals like lithium this significant amendment signals a shift from the previous exclusivity of lithium mining to state owned enterprises so now private companies can also participate in the mining of lithium reserves the government's aim to boost uh, aim is to boost the exploration and mining activities of these critical minerals which are essential for economic development and national security and it's a move that aligns with the evolving needs of our growing economy isn't it and india to so recognizing the uh, importance of uh, lithium has identified uh, fired many uh, promising lithium blocks in jammu and kashmir and as well as in karnataka the government is gearing up to kick start the auction process for these blocks in the next 4 uh, 5 months and it is making a crucial step towards reducing our dependency on the imports but as with any significant change there are incentives and challenges the government is actually sweetening the deal for the private miners by reimbursing half the cost of exploration so half the cost of the exploration will be borne by the government and half will be borne by the private player additionally miners can suggest areas that they want to explore and mine right and this will foster a collaborative approach and however there are uh, certain challenges as well the private sector may encounter hurdles such as land acquisition because land acquisition is a significant problem in india environmental clearance is an issue and that the potential of social opposition cannot be excluded as well right and these challenges highlight the delicate balance between economic growth and responsible resource management is it it our next story is about the lithium pricing in india the government is considering a bold step linking the domestic lithium price to the weekly rates of lithium hydroxide monohydrate which is which are published by the renowned london metal exchange or the lme right but why uh, government is taking this step well it's all about fixing the value of lithium within our borders and also facilitating a fair bidding mechanism for lithium blocks and this move comes at a time when india is actively exploring its lithium potential the geological survey of india or the gsi has been conducting exploration in salal haimana area of uh, jammu and kashmir and an impressive 5.9 million tons of inferred lithium reserves have been identified and this not only boosts our domestic domestic reserves but also sets the stage for the future auctions isn't it and the gsi has also prepared blocks for other rare earth elements uh, uh, that could be uh, that has a possible potential for future auctions right so there are other blocks which are rare earth elements uh, which can be auctioned in the future and this comprehensive approach reflects india's commitment towards securing a diverse range of critical minerals essential for various industry right and the government aims not just to uh, uh, to secure the economic growth but also environmental sustainability by striving for a net zero goal by 2070 and for your information uh, currently india relies on imports for these key minerals like uh, lithium cobalt and nickel so self reliance is the key right next topic is on the recent uh, recent deadly earthquake in turkey and syria let's talk about the geological setting of turkey and syria first here the anatolian an anatolian uh, plate hides itself caught in a geological squeeze between the arabian plate and the eurasian plate right and this intense tecton- tectonic activity is the reason behind the frequent earthquake that you see in this region the recent earthquake epicenter was identified along the east anatolian fault zone which is a uh, hotspot for this kind of seismic activities and the movement along the fault lines like this uh, like this is a natural consequence of the ongoing tectonic disturbances in the region now uh, there are other factors as well one of them being seismic waves these waves come in different types as you know and their frequency play a crucial role in the level of destruction that they cause the recent earthquake in turkey had a high frequency content meaning it unleashed more short period waves and these short period waves can be particularly damaging to buildings and structures and as you know the consequences of the earthquake is um, are heartbreaking as many lives are lost and communities shattered the impact extended not only to turkey but also syria right and infrastructure and the environment both bore the brunt and uh, we, we we have seen crumbling buildings and there are many altered landscape in the region as well 
right so that's all about the turkey earthquake next we are diving into the jal jeevan mission which according to the who or the world health organization is a ground breaking effort with not only environmental implications but also significant health and socio economic benefits so envisioning the uh, delivery of 55 liters of water per person per day to every rural household by 2024 the mission seeks to achieve this through the implementation of fhtc or functional household tap connection right this break down uh, the topic the jal jeevan mission falls under the purview of jal shakti ministry it's not just about the pro- about providing water to uh, um, to the rural area it's also about creating a jan andolan or a people's movement for water making it a collective priority is it and now what are the key goals of uh, the jjm or the jal jeevan mission firstly ensuring the functionality of existing water supply system and connections right secondly water quality becomes a focal point with monitoring and testing thirdly sustainable agriculture is on the agenda which addresses the holistic approach to water usage the mission stand, stands out with its integrated approach to demand and supply side uh, water management at the local level it doesn't just stop at delivering water but also it incorporates essential elements like rainwater and harvesting groundwater recharge and household wastewater management for use right and the jal jeevan mission operates on a community centric model and it fosters a sense of collective responsibility towards water and extensive information education and communication efforts the play a pivotal role in this whole process it's not just about uh, drinking water taps it's also about transforming mindsets and a bit through this game right so that's all so that's all from my side uh, i hope these updates will help you in your interview preparation remember in the personality test your awareness about the current developments in the field of geology as well as the uh, society will be assessed right so you need to prepare holistically for that all the best for your interviews and i'll see you in the next one